<laughs> All right, Sage. These are floating around the bottom of my sustainer for my domino. What the heck are these things? Which domino you get? The 500. Okay, it doesn't matter. They work for both dominoes. So stay tuned in this video and I will go through the cross stops and a few things that you may or may not know about your domino joiners. Okay, so let's just go over the basic bones of these. Um, there's a little dovetail right here. Okay, these come with the domino. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't know what the heck these are. Okay, it's been a big thing during trainings. How do I use these? There's a little dovetail. See the little um, tail here? There's actually a pin right here in the base. Okay, so when you look at this and you see this little lever pointing forward, see how it's loose? Mm -hmm. it, this is where I see confusion. When you put it on the base, you tilt it back so this is never in the way because you have to utilize this pin. This pin goes into the mortise. Oh, okay. So in other words, you don't have to mark the boards. And I'll talk about the myth of these, <laughs> uh, how people go about doing them, and it just drives me crazy because it's designed for one thing, ease of assembly. Gotcha. So one thing to remember about these cross stops <laughs> is they can be utilized on the 500 or the 700. Oh. Okay, so the distance from the base to the center of the bit, we've discussed this before, is? 10 millimeters. And the distance from the base to the center of the XL is? 15. Good. So if we come in here, Chris, look, give me a camera, man. You'll see on here, see where it says DF500? That's exactly the distance to the center of the pin. And if I need to set it up for the 700, I take it and I can rotate it like this and use it and now to the center it's 15 millimeter. Oh cool. So that's how that works. So I'll put one of these on and then I'll have you put one on. What I want to make sure is everybody understands in a video the base should always be on a flat surface when you put these on. Okay. I'm going to take it. Remember that that's facing forward. It's loose you pull it back and it's tight and that's really stable. So I'll have you do that one. All right. It's flat on there and it's tight. So now you know why they call it the cross stops. Okay, so what is one inch in metric? Approximately 25 millimeters. Okay, so this is where the scale comes into play. Uh, you'll see the increments. You'll see this cursor and this cursor. It's always read by the inside cursor. The distance, I have it set at 150. How many times does 25 go into 150? Six. So that's approximately six inches from center. Oh, okay. Okay, so I can space my dominoes out when I shoulder that pin in the mortise, and you'll see that in a few minutes. All right, Sedge, how far can I space them apart? Anywhere from four inches. 100 millimeter okay. to a little over eight inches of pot. And I'll okay. show you the setup on that. But we're gonna sit at 150 millimeters. It's easy to remember. And I set the one on the left and the one on the right, each at 150. Now, you may ask, what is this outside cursor for? And that's easy. Remember I said you always read the inside? What if I wanna set up an extra set over here Okay, or pick up an extra set because I have multiples and I want to space them six inches and eight inches apart. These are all spring loaded. Oh, okay, so instead of these flaps, we've gone through this before, from here to the center of the bit is, you remember? 30? No, 27. Oh man, you were so close. Oh, 37. 37. You had it, you had it, you had it. <laughs> So we're gonna do the first one here, we're using this flap, a okay. 37 millimeters, and you'll see this in the video. But then we're gonna take the pin, put it into the mortise, and go to the next one. Do you notice that, or you will notice, and I used to do this with a biscuit joint, you put a, a space here, like this, and you would just go like this, and that's all you would have, or just like that, then you would split them apart, because in a biscuit you have a lot of slop. Okay, with this, we're gonna do the first one tight. And I do, I label this as soon as I, as soon as I do this, we're gonna go loose, loose, loose. And remember what happens on this one. Has to happen on that. Has to happen. So we'll start with a tight and then go loose. And we'll do a tight, loose, loose, loose. Now, I'm gonna blow a myth out of the water right now. 
I've seen so many people say, well, the way I do this is I go 37 tight here, 37 from this side tight if they're even, and then I do the rest loose. And I go, you are, how do you say, taking away why you have that for assembly. Because if we did these all, what if we did them all tight? Would they go together using the cross stops and the pins or the flaps? Sure. Absolutely, but you, and say it was 10 feet run, <laughs> I would have to stay, it would, they would go together perfectly, but we'd have to put it down on one end and have Chris with a hammer knocking it together. It's, but that's not how we assemble. So if we do one tight, it keeps her from shifting. Mm -hmm. And this is how you assemble like that. And it gives you just a little wiggle room. So if we did this one tight, it would kind of defeat what we were trying right. to accomplish for ease of assembly. Makes sense. And you'll see that in just a couple minutes. So big D. Could you sign that really quick? Sure. I just signed mine. <laughs> you know why we're doing that? So we know which one I mess up and which one you mess up. I mean, right. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this. I'm not gonna talk while I'm running it, but I wanna make sure you see, I'm gonna use the flat and I'm gonna do it tight. I'll move this to tight. Always when you're switching between gears, make sure the machines are running. And then I'll do these loose and then we'll look at it and you'll see what I've been talking about. But I'm gonna be taking this pin here and taking it and putting it in the mortise. So as you can see, we saved all that time and layout. And you know, I always tell everybody, what's your time worth? You don't have to mock the boards. The precision is on the machine. So this is what you get. You get tight, and by the way, this will keep those boards and glue up from creeping, okay? Or it will help you align, like when you're building a cabinet, front edges. And then you have these. There's six millimeters of wiggle room, three on each side. If I chose this setting, Chris, come down here and get this setting right here. That gives you 10 millimeters of wiggle room. And like everything, it's just performing the four laws of the domino. Make sure you work off the plate off the same referenced face. Make sure you plunge from the back of the machine in line. Make sure you're working off the table so the base doesn't stop the table. That's your now, if the base is on here, that's your reference edge. And the third, hopefully it comes through in the video, the, or the fourth I should say, is making sure you plunge at a steady rate so the bit doesn't chat it as it's cutting. Okay, so a little coaching on this. Good okay. job, you used it, the flat from the 37. But here's where I've seen people get a little bit frustrated once they learn what the cross stops are actually for. This is just for repeatability and reference. It's not to hold the machine in tension. So I'm gonna have you do this, Big D. I'm gonna okay. have you put it on here, okay? And when you put this in, don't jam it. Just nestle it up against okay. the shoulder. Let's do that again. Okay. You're gonna put it in and take it and shoulder it. Somebody once mentioned to me, oh, they keep falling off. And then I saw him working with it and he was jamming it. Of course it's gonna fall off, okay? Right. So just make sure your plate's on there, make sure that's referenced, and you're gonna set it in, into the uh, loose. So Big D, that was great. Um, in the middle of the uh, video, you'll probably hear, you, you won't hear me, but you'll see me going like this. And what I always do, and here's one of the biggest things that people get a little, maybe a little frustrated, they don't understand the finesse of the domino, is I was going like this. And what that means to Big D was making sure that that plate is flat. I was looking at this angle with it and his plate was slightly tilted. Just making sure this little bit and that's flat on there. 
because what will happen is I can guarantee it you're going to work with this and then all of a sudden and for everybody out there you're, you're going to probably nod your head <laughs> boards are coming in like this or coming in like this it's because the plate is not referencing that surface properly okay big D this is the one I did so I'm going to put the, <laughs> the dominoes in all right and we have that little wiggle room built in we still have that killer glue line there with it right yep. okay we haven't lost any of the integrity of the domino okay i'm going to put that in there like that and then this one in here now let's take yours remember that's the face mm -hmm. so you're going to flip it over i always start it with the tight one how's it go oh wow that that's about the best joint i've ever seen so let's do this really quick. I'm gonna take, take those clamps on the vertical. And this is what I want everybody to see in the video. This is now tight, mm -hmm. okay? And if you've ever been in a glue up, and next year we're gonna be doing a lot of glue ups, okay? If we didn't use dominoes in the tight position here, <clears throat> and we would have what is known as glue creep, mm -hmm. it would start sliding back and forth. Now that position, it's perfect and it was ease of assembly and that face is perfectly flush because we marked our boards and we made sure the plate was dead on there yes sir so that's what the cross stops are for it's not having to take the time for all the layout the precision is on the machine so we hope this video <laughs> was helpful and you can see exactly what the cross stops are for don't let them sit in the bottom of your sustainer. Uh, I've seen so many people over the years just say, what are these for? And I'm hoping this video kind of enlightened everybody to them. So as we always say, be positive and stay sharp. <laughs>